grab you a cup of coffee or in my case for today chocolate supreme hot chocolate and we are going to be talking today about how to do high school electives for credit hey everyone we are in the office again today because again i am multitasking while we are in the middle of uh christmas drama rehearsals and things we have a rehearsal tonight and it's kind of just busy time but y'all said you actually kind of liked when i'm in the office because i guess it feels more casual than just like just standing in front of a backdrop and talking to you guys and i'm also kind of like working and doing things at the same time i did find this because i kind of missed my courage dear heart sign this is a sign i actually keep on my desk and if you can't read it it says fall is proof that change is beautiful and i love this sign and i keep it on my desk in the fall it's normally like behind my screen though so that when i'm working on my screen or my monitor here because i have two monitors um, then I can see the uh, sign as I'm working over here. Also, I have a light over here for a little bit more light in here. Um, so that may like have <laughs> some shadowing. So what I'm going to do first of all for today is I also do have, um, I've got a video editing on one screen and then on the other screen, um, we use Home Life Academy as an umbrella school here in East Tennessee. I think the entire state of Tennessee you can use Home Life Academy if you want, but I know like a lot of people in East Tennessee specifically do use um, Home Life Academy. So I'm going to go through their list because they have a great list of things and then I will kind of just make some points along the way of like what we use how we've implemented some of these and also like a lot of these facts come from my I call her my uh, friend now and also uh, homeschool counselor Margie who works with Home Life Academy she has a wonderful video on not stressing through high school and I will include that link in the description box below um, she has it's a great video on like most people think that homeschool is like you buy this box curriculum you work your way through it and then you're done if you get behind you got to stress about it you got to finish every single bit of the curriculum and she has a different approach to to, to high school than most people that usually counsel homeschooling do and I love her approach to high school we've implemented a lot of the things that she said and it's helped us move back to a path of more like how we wanted to homeschool in the first place so I will link that video below and it's a huge help let me just kind of run through the electives list that they have so on their website under the high school planning course guide you can find electives you can actually find every subject on here so i will add that in the state of tennessee if you take a course outside of the required credits it does count as an elective so like if that helps too if you have a child who's more science natured and they want to take an extra science credit after the original three credits which in, in tennessee i keep emphasizing in tennessee because other states have different requirements in in tennessee to graduate high school and go on to college you have to take three sciences biology chemistry and physics which is why we bought the whole 101 series because it goes through biology chemistry and physics even if my kids don't want to go to college i would rather them be ready for college that way if they ever change their mind they are ready if that makes i hope you guys understand that because we put our kids on a college path doesn't mean we're going to be disappointed if they don't go to college. They may be called to something else that doesn't do college or like a tech school or just being a stay-at-home mom like I am. Um, so, like, we don't, it's not like us doing this just to make sure our kids go to college. I want them to have the option of college if they feel led to do that. So, that's why we do that. So, again, science, biology, chemistry, physics. Um, after those three, any sciences in high school are an elective. Um, let me check social studies real quick because that one I can't remember. Okay, so you have to do U.S. history, economics, government, and then you either have to do world geography or world history. It's a total of three credits. Anything else you do is an elective. So if you take, you have a child that does world geography and world history, one of those is an elective and the other ones count as their social studies credit. They've got some really cool ones on here. I'll just kind of read through them like Christian worldview, psychology, philosophy, civics, any like specific focal points on specific points in history. Some of the examples they give is like uh, early colonization to 1877 and then the follow-up for that is uh, 1865 to present. Anything like that. And then it also says that dual enrollment counts as, because normally when you do dual enrollment, my understanding is some colleges do dual enrollment, you get two high school credit per dual enrollment class. So if you take a college level class for history, it counts as one history credit and one electives credit in high school. So that's also something else to consider as well. And we'll get back to that. PE, I think, counts as an elective credit and it's required. 
um, that one is 150 hour requirement and we'll get back to time requirements in a minute. Other required courses that I'm pretty sure count as electives are health and wellness and personal finance. So health and wellness, we'll get to that in January because we've written our own health curriculum and so far the kids and I are really enjoying going through that together. And then personal finance we're taking in the spring and I'll explain that possibly over the summer, maybe next winter because of the way we're doing it. It's, it's, it, when, when I explain it to you guys, you'll fully understand how that's going. Let's go back to their list of electives though. So let's go through things that are not like required courses or extra courses. So let's talk about a couple things. This first item on here is foreign languages and they are pretty open to any, almost any foreign language that you want to do. So if I was to go in and make a uh, phantom course for one of my kids, which means I'm going in and checking, it's, it's as if I'm actually adding that course to their curriculum for the year, but I'm actually just looking to see what's available under that course. Sometimes I will do this in the spring whenever we go and make our next year's plan into uh, their program that where you plan out your uh, classes for the year, you put in your what curriculum you're going to use and your hours done. Sometimes I'll go in here and I'll make a what I call a phantom course, which means I'm going to I'm going in like I'm making it, but I'm not actually including it. So under their foreign language here in really my dog is such a drama dog whenever I'm filming foreign language courses, American Sign Language. And one of mine took American Sign Language and Spanish. Another one of mine just took American Sign Language, but they do count it as a foreign language. Um, other ones that they offer are Arabic, Chinese, English as a second language. If your dominant language is not English, then English as your second language counts as a foreign language credit. French, German, Greek, Hebrew for like the Bible students, Italian, Japanese, Latin, which I've heard if your child is looking into medical field, Latin is a great choice for foreign language. The public high school I went to, my second public high school I went to, if you've not seen, we have a members only video where I talk about like one of the reasons why we homeschool and I went to two public high schools. So um, the second one I went to, a lot of the kids who were looking at medical took Latin as their foreign language and they said that it, and uh, the teacher said that like a lot of their past students, it's really helped them to do that. So like if you have a child looking at a medical field, maybe Latin as their foreign language will work or Spanish because like honestly you're going to get both. Um, next one is Spanish. So those are the ones that are offered. I have one in Japanese right now. Um, Italian's also on, yeah, Italian's also on here. I think we'll have one that might want to do Italian. I don't remember. But, like, those are the ones that they offer that you can do if you want. I'm going to click off those so it doesn't think I'm actually making a class. Foreign language, you can do it one of two ways. So, like, American Sign Language, we use it in our, is, use it in our home because I'm hard of hearing. I don't sign on videos anymore because YouTube is a really weird place sometimes. Um, but, uh, we also did take one course of American Sign Language, like at an actual place that teaches American Sign Language. Um, the foreign languages, we use Duolingo, and a lot of people have said they prefer Duolingo, and some people prefer Duolingo. It's a little more repetitive if you miss a couple days, but if you do it like every Monday to Friday, um, it's not quite as repetitive, and then you also learn more like conversation syntax in it doing that. Moving on to the next group is visual and performing arts. Oh, also let me cover in Tennessee, you do classes for a full year. And if you do it for a full year, it's one credit. If you do it for one semester, it's only a half credit. And there's only some exceptions to that. The next group is visual and performing arts. I'm going to read them and then I'm going to add my commentary. So the first one is dance. Um, the ones I suggest are ballet, jazz, tap, or modern, but anything kind of falls under that. I'm pretty sure gymnastics falls under that. Instrumental music, uh, they suggest p piano, guitar, or drums, but I think as long as you're learning an instrument for one year, it counts. Um, art appreciation, music appreciation, music history, music theory, theater arts such as drama. Ooh, I may add that for my kids because they're doing a drama right now. I'm going to contact Margie and see if I can do that. Art history, visual arts, art of the Western world, photography, and dual enrollment courses are listed under there. So again, let's go back to all of these under visual and performing arts, you would track hours. For one full credit in Tennessee, a class to be a full credit has to have 150 hours. Like with PE, we found, let's, I'm doing PE because I'm going to cover dance for a minute. PE and dance, you've got 150 hours 
And if, I mean, if you've got a student who does like dance like every school year, then one year count it as your PE and the next year count it as your dance elective class. And then if they're doing classes for like an hour or twice a week, there you go. There's your 150 hours. Because I think on average I figured out you got you do like 30 minutes a day will add up to those 150 hours if you do 36, 37 weeks to a school year. Plus a couple hours extra on the weekends, which if you have a child in dance, you know there's always going to be those... Uh, recitals and I was I was in dance for six years and then I was in color guard and then I was in indoor color guard and so like I, I know how this goes like you're not just doing it on the Tuesday Thursday rehearsals there's also Saturdays there's also like practicing at home and things I think you'll have no problem at all doing that on the instruments this one kind of scares people because they think oh no I've got to pay a professional to teach my kids there are so many videos now in a post 2020 world that can teach you how to play instruments on the internet. I have one who's looking at guitar and we may push that back to next year because of the Christmas drama this year or we may do it for a half credit next semester. We're kind of like looking at it and debating because I also don't know if the guitar that we have will work because they probably both need new strings and that's going to be a little bit costly. There's so many videos you can look at online that would teach. Um, one thing that I found was uh, we like a lot of Chris Tomlin music. There are several videos on YouTube of once you learn what each chord means um chris there's chris tomlin videos that'll show you how to put your fingers on the right spot for the chord shows you when that chord changes through the songs like you could watch it once on and on youtube you can slow a video down which sometimes i wonder if people do that because like i talk really fast to not be super long videos you can slow it down or you could pause it as you practice doing it and then you can just keep doing that song for like a week or two weeks there's also like super easy beginner books at like online bookstores amazon has some great resources for books for those art appreciation and music appreciation one time i've heard somebody say that like for art appreciation they went to an art museum for a field trip beginning of the school year and they bought like a really thick pack of postcards and what they would do is each week they would do a new postcard now like with the classes like this it's not going to sound like it's going to do 150 hours but you kind of like have to make it do it um but she would buy she bought the super thick pack of postcards that had like actual art pieces on it so for one week they would work on who is this art and they would leave it on like their child's area where their child does school and it would be like who is this artist what is this piece where are they from what was the inspiration for it there you go art music done music theory you can kind of go with the same process, but the way that my middle school taught music theory, I'm not 100% against public school, by the way, guys. There were some things I learned in public school that were great. Just my overall experience in public school is why I homeschool. But I had a really great music teacher in eighth grade. So my middle school one year, Tennessee did this thing where they're like, every student needs to be an artist and a musician. And it's like, no, they did it for one year. <laughs> and every student had to be an artist and a musician. When they added music theory, all of a sudden, like a couple months into the school year, the way my music teacher, who was my band instructor then, because I played um, instruments in middle school and high school, was basically the exact same way we do movies as literature, except instead of the movies being based on literature, it's movies based on musicals. So we might do like the music man or the sound of music. And it doesn't always have to have the word music in it. Those are just the two off the top of my head because we're doing music man this week for movies as literature. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll try to link them down below. Um, but yeah, basically same concept. Music theory can be taught that way. Theater, again, acting, drama, all that. Um, I may ask her if we can do that, but I don't know because we're only doing it for two months. We'll see. Art history, honestly, could be done the same way as art appreciation. And there's actual free online courses that you can do with that as well. Visual arts is the one that gives you a lot more play with it do anything that you're doing that is a visual art so like if you have a child who does sketching that would be under visual art if you have a child that does painting that would be under visual art if you've already done two years of dance like one year of physical education with dance one year of dance that third year of dance would be a visual art that's just kind of how it goes art of the western world is just like a history class studying art in the western world only photography practice using a camera go outside take some nature photos take photos of family and then again the dual enrollment classes and the other ones on here that they recommend business courses are electives marketing courses are electives video editing and filmmaking 
our electives. So if one of my kids want to help me like start editing some of the videos we do for YouTube or helping me film some of the clean with me's and stuff like stuff that's not I wouldn't recommend nowadays honestly having like a high like a teenage girl having their own YouTube channel just because the internet is a creepy place now. Video editing and filmmaking they could film like ASMR videos and then like learn to edit and upload them for one year. Computer graphics kind of and computer technology kind of the same thing again you can there's so an introduction to computers so many online courses that offer that business communications journalism let them make a paper based on like things happening in their community or things happening at their church or um you know family vacations and stuff speech class is a little harder to do that one you'd probably actually need to do like a co-op with um it's same for debate technical writing i actually don't know what that is advanced communications act prep um, many, 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 many places I know Khan Academy does are now offering free ACT prep courses and uh, you only do it for one semester because technically you're supposed to like do it and then take the ACT same year. So you would do it in the fall and then take the ACT in the spring or you would take it over the summer and then uh, do the ACT in the fall and then speed reading. I'm, I, did, I don't know. Speed reading is not really my thing. Other courses most homeschool Christian homeschool families are going to have Bible in there. Old Testament study, New Testament study, Bible, Bible history, introduction to world religions, Bible 1, 2, 3, and 4. They all count as electives. So if you have a child who's just struggling with it, and like one of mine, what I did was she needed an extra credit for high school. She did a study through like John and Romans and every school day she did like one chapter each day. And then there would be like one focus verse each day that she was supposed to learn and copy and rewrite. Um, so she did that. It was like John and Romans and then maybe the book of Matthew was all we had time for for one semester. But like the way we did it all counted for one because th different circumstance. Driver's education. I don't know what they would require you to do. I don't know if like you would have to like start with the learner's permit and prove you get your license by the end of the day. I don't know. It is a half credit though. It is only one semester. Uh, study skills. I honestly don't know. Life skills. This is the fun one. A lot of things fall under life skills. Um, if you learn how to use, like if you literally want to teach your kids how to use a washer and dryer, how to use an ironing board, how to change out the air filter, things that you need to know to do like for basic everyday life in your home counts as life skills. Um, home economics, also a lot of things under there. So some of the classes that my kids have done under home economics, sewing, cooking. Let me go make another phantom class and show you what they say everything under home economics. No, not that. Bad. Bad computer. There we go. Um, that would be under electives, home economics, where are you? Ones that they have on here as well, advanced communications, auto mechanics, business, carpentry, child development, civil air patrol, community service, community service, super easy one, 150 hours of just serving your community. Um, there's so many places that do trash pickup that'll let teenagers that are responsible and show responsibility to go and work at them. Um, think like working like at our, when our kids work at our mission house, that counts. Computer technology, debate, drafting, driver's ed. Family and consumer science, home economics, home economics cooking, and home economics sewing. So that kind of all falls together. Family and consumer science is you're teaching cooking but you're also teaching the science behind the nutrition of what you're cooking home economic cooking is basically kitchen safety skills you know why we're not going to hold our finger under here while we're cutting you know cucumbers things like that um why do you not touch a burner that's red hot can't see the child that that applied to but it's okay family and consumer science you're focused more on the nutritional value of what's going into your food why we're not going to serve french fries with every single meal why we need to rotate vegetables and uh different colors of vegetables and why we do that um why you need protein why you need dairy or dairy alternative um things like that fall under family and consumer science and there is actually a great website that we may be doing family consumer science next year. Let me see if I can find ag, ag classroom.org. When I went to submit this for our uh, cooking class and our health class, Margie was like, that's actually would be great for just go through every link on their website for a family and consumer science class. So let me cover a little, a couple of the things that they go through here and then you can go back and look at it later. Um, a closer look at fats, a tale of two burgers, beef and plant-based proteins, beef making the grade. And there's so many topics on here and it'll tell you like what grade for each one kind of goes with that. Um, but it has like a lot of like 
comparing things, learning things. Also, there is a lot of doctors who have started making YouTube videos about like there has now been a uh, comparison between like whenever you have a poor diet and depression and anxiety and how those two can tie together. Um, so those kind of go together and that would be under family and consumer science. Um, other things under family and consumer science is again it's family. Um, there's a couple of things that fall under that but I'm not 100% sure about all of that. Uh, life skills, home economics, baby and child care, 150 hours babysitting or working in your church nursery was what we were told. Auto mechanic, go and apprentice under somebody. Be like, hey, I'm a high school student and I want to learn how to work on cars. Do you have any uh, openings or anything that you can do for it? Now, some places with insurances now, they can't do that. But some places still will if like they're uh, in, like if they work for themselves. So that's one thing. Woodworking can also be a super fun one. They can learn whittling and things. They don't have to like make like a birdhouse or something. Make something that they want to do. Humanities, drafting, photography. Again, I don't, oh, photography is also, is... So the first list I let read off before Bible, those are all college bound required courses. Like if you want to go to college, you have to pick electives from that category. Um, the Bible ones are not under there for college, but like if you're going to a Bible college, you probably need to have some Bible classes in your, some colleges, you would need to have Bible classes in your high school work. Um, these are non-college requir required, but suggested ones if your kids just need some extra electives. Humanities, drafting, photography, commercial art, etymology, African American literature, creative writing. So creative writing can be super fun. It's basically just that you can either give your child uh, pr writing prompts or if they say, hey, I want to write this story by the end of the uh, semester, go for it. That's kind of like where it goes. Technical writing, again, I'm not 100% sure. Creative writing is on here twice. Don't know why. Journalism make a newspaper which also uh, could tie into like computer editing and stuff too etymology is on here twice as well here's one for older high school kids work experience 300 hours counts as one credit it says one credit minimum i don't know if that means you can only do it once or if you have to do i don't know i don't know that maybe just once 300 hours counts as one credit now this one's a little bit more because realistically i said you know 30 minutes a day would count as an elective credit, but like if you're doing a job, if you like have a after school job, you're probably not going to be working 30 minutes and then peace out, I'm done. You would probably be working like one to two hours or four hours and then you'd be done. So work experience is a little bit more. I know in public schools, like if you work for, my husband's work now is allowing, because normally you didn't work at my husband's work, you have to have a high school diploma. Now they're allowing some kids to come in who want to like, um, I guess apprentice under there, they get like half, they get minimum wage pay and they work from lunch or right after lunch until the 3.30 time to clock out is. For that, like you, normally you would be like for high, other, older high school kids, some of them are done with their credits by junior and senior, well, especially their senior year. So then they work, do school for the morning and then they can work in the afternoon. And that's also especially good for like, um, a lot of restaurant places like that right after lunch rush between lunch and when pe the dinner rush starts, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get like younger people in to work for those hours and you have a lot of older people who have already worked the full day. So like it kind of gives a fresh rotation in as well. And there's places like Chick-fil-A that would probably be more likely to hire for that. I know Chick-fil-A actually has a program that hires specifically homeschool kids starting at age 15 for so many hours a week. Now if you're 15 you get less hours a week than you do if you're 16 or 17. Those are things to look into. So that's kind of it for the electives. That's kind of thoughts that I have if I were to pull from this list like just give you guys you know the classes that we've taken for credits are um let me just read through them real quick so one that we've done for credit is we did an extra a couple of my kids have done an extra science we did American Sign Language and Spanish so foreign languages um home economics cooking home economics sewing bible courses art class like Basically, it's under visual performing arts. They're doing some kind of art where like they're sketching, drawing, learning new skills. Sometimes with that also, I'll buy them like a how to draw book and they'll learn like just how to do faces, how to do eyes. And they show me what they've done for that day. Um, PE class, extra sciences, and cooking, foreign language, and PE. So like it doesn't have to be super complicated. Ones that I really would love to do if we just need to fill those credit courses is I may look into the music appreciation because it'll be like movies as literature. They're going to watch a movie based on music, or, you know, the music in the video and like it'll be a little more in-depth of like not just write this report. It would actually be like 
compare different music styles and the one I, where I love Music Man for this I'll, I'll throw this in here I love Music Man for this because like Music Man has two song two songs that are onomatopoeias um, there's a song where like they sing with the speed of the train there's the one where it's like the gossip song and they sound like little you know birds chirping as they sing um, but it also has like a romance song and like it has a lot of variety of songs to choose from I remember in, in middle school and I don't know like I haven't seen it since middle school but like we did West Side Story as well Shakespearean ones A Midsummer Night's Dream is a comedy uh just stuff like that so like I'd probably add that in um I'm gonna ask her about the theater arts one and just different like those are ones I'd probably add in the ACT photography is pretty fun basically the overall gist of the video for today is electives don't have to be super complicated look at what you're already doing in your family like I, I read through that whole list and give you ideas the gist is look at what you're already doing in your family if your family is super athletic look into more of like the athletics of athleticism of the visual performing arts and the pe credits if your family is more art based look at the art theory the um, art appreciation classes if your husband works for himself look at what he's doing and see if there's something under that that would count for uh your kids doing school like i know one time a family like they were building their own house and like they found a way to work with their school or i don't know if they had an umbrella school but they they found a way to like add those in as electives of like what they were working on at the house at the time um so just look at what you're already doing find some fun ways to incorporate that and count it as your elective work now i'm not just saying like be lazy and be like oh we drove by this art piece mural thing and that's our art for this week don't don't be like that because when you do things like that it's going to make you look less credible to like the umbrella school the school systems and the people that we do have to report to i'm not saying be lazy i'm not i am not encouraging to not follow the rules i'm just saying look at what you're already doing and find ways to incorporate that into your schooling get those 30 minutes a day and make school fun let your kids help be involved in this and make school fun that's it for today's video thank you to all of our members for supporting this content and allowing us to continue making videos and thank you to every single one of you for liking watching positive comments and subscribing and for all of you who are new since we've started doing more homeschool videos thank you there will be more videos coming up actually no i can't tell you because i can't see it right now i think my next video i'm actually going to be talking about like schooling through the holidays is a video coming up soon and then look forward to in january how we wrote our own health curriculum that's it for today thank you for watching and we'll see you next time